Omniverse. The Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program contains content that may not be suitable for all ages. Listener discretion is advised. Visit CthulhuMystery.com and head to Patreon.com slash Omniverse Media to join our community of fans and unlock further secrets. Do you hear that? In the cruel blackness of night, an unknowable evil from beyond time cries out. What dark deeds unfold on the streets of Arkham, and which unwitting souls, innocent or impure, will succumb to the maddening call, the call of Cthulhu. America's Natural Utility Services bring you part four of the Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program, Tonight's strange story, Hot Leads and Dirty Deeds. Has this ever happened to you? Lights out, everybody. Hey, who put the lights out? Well, I was just trying to save on gas. Save on gas? Dear, I'm all for penny pinching, but there's no need. No need? Whatever do you mean? I've got wet gas. I'll just uh, crack a window. Wet gas is a new affordable kind of gas from Brown. Brown? The Brown Gas Company. When I saw how much money we'd save, I couldn't pass on wet gas. Hot diggity dog, that blows regular old natural gas away. Ask your local gas supplier if they have brown wet gas today. A proud subsidiary of America's Natural Utility Services. And now, our featured program. The housemates of Big Mama's boarding house have split up in the investigation of their murdered acquaintance, Hannah Pickering. Ex-federal agent Sam Spade and lovable farm boy Hank Jr. are outside of town checking over the crime scene. Meanwhile, smooth-talking Cyril and dapper Miss Delaney head to an address found on a page torn from Hannah's diary. The whereabouts of the crazed Bible salesman, Father Grandfather, are unknown. You guys go check out the farmhouse. Uh, you guys knock on the door. It's an old old New England farmhouse. This looks pretty well kept. It's not long until an old man answers answers the door. He's got a uh, sheepdog at his side. Th- this guy looks like he's somewhere between 65 and 100. Is he a Bible salesman? Probably not, as he's in a farmhouse, but who knows. He says, uh, hey there. What could I do you for, gentlemen? Federal agent Sam Spade, and I'm uh, investigating the murder that occurred here last night. Uh, oh. I was wondering if you had a moment to answer a few oh, questions. Oh dear. Well, yes, yes, yes. Uh, my name's uh, Ryder Montgom- Montgomery Ryder. Uh, what can I do to you guys? Come in, come in, come in. Let's let's talk to Sofa. Don't worry about Shep here. He don't bite. Heck, he can barely see. I take off my hat and walk into the house and sit down on the sofa. I'll follow just just, uh, but I'm looking around like it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a small town, cozy people, federal agent. Yeah, he makes... Didn't even show a badge. <laughs> <laughs> he makes you guys some coffee and then uh, uh, proceeds to sit down beside you guys and says, uh, So, you guys are looking into the uh, the case, huh? Yeah. Uh, Terrible thing. Did you know the victim? No, no. I, I didn't even know anything happened until the police came to me uh, this morning. So you heard nothing outside? No, I'm afraid not. Any other people come up and down this road? No, not really. I mean, we, we get people heading in and out of town, but that's it. Uh, the one thing that I, you know, I wouldn't say there was really anything much happened. Unless you take much stop, stock in dreams, I suppose. Had a nasty one last night. Sure, why not? I've got time and a <laughs> cup of coffee and it hasn't gotten cold yet. Well, uh... <laughs> Mind if I smoke? Oh, yeah, certainly, certainly. I pretend to listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> dreams, uh... Funny things, but uh, this one was uh, nasty. Woke up with the sweats. I was uh, dreaming, going about my business, you know, like you do in your dreams. And uh, well, all of a sudden, I just felt this uh, terrible sickness, you see. And I looked down at myself, and I was covered in these nasty sores. They were just weeping and bleeding, and it was terrible. And it just kept flowing and flowing and didn't stop. By the time I was drowning in it, uh, I woke up, and Shep was barking his head off. What time did you wake up? Oh, I don't... I don't remember, uh... I don't know, maybe about... A little after midnight, probably. I asked him if he 
heard anything strange at all like after he woke up like did he hear any commotion or trouble from the road or anything nah just Shep barking like the dickens was he barking at you or barking at something else ah uh, barking like a crazy person he kind of can't hear how's his nose his nose is okay I suppose I mean you know he he still has it you think Shep would mind taking a walk with us the four of us out to that tree sure I'd be happy to come let's go Shep Time we're going to have an adventure. We're going to help this nice policeman. While we're walking out there, I want to know, is somebody manage it, live on it? Are you just going to ask Mr. Ryder? Yeah. Oh, but the dump, yeah, there's a caretaker, uh, Mr. Coffin or something like that. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Coffin. Coffin. Okay, so does the dog act weird as we get closer to the tree or anything? Do dog seems pretty uh, sedate. Mm -hmm. Like he had to be roused to leave the house. Mm-hmm. Mr. Ryder brings the dog out, you know, you guys walk up to where the tree is, dog sniffs around, makes a couple barks and then growls and then kind of like does a circuit around behind uh, um, Mr. Ryder and then just kind of plops down behind his legs. So it was about 1230 that you woke up yeah. from the dog barking? Yeah. Officer said the call came in around 1 a.m. Well, thank you very much for the coffee. You've been very helpful. Uh, no problem. No problem. So we definitely got the time of death. Well, have a good day, gentlemen. If you need anything, uh, you know where to find me. Absolutely. And we know where to find good coffee now. Yep. And he and the dog potter back to their uh, home. I call out to the farmer. Do you have a telephone in your house? Yes. Yes, I do. Would you mind calling us a cab? We'll be back here in maybe 30 minutes. Certainly. Certainly. That's uh, a good idea. Uh, <clears throat> tell him uh, Agent Spade is looking for a cab. Certainly. Thank you. So smart. Can do. Hey, man, this ain't my first rodeo. <laughs> Have a good day, sir. And he makes his way back into the house. Okay, you guys wander your way up to the dump. Pretty quickly, the dump looks like it's kind of patched off into two areas. One is just a huge, disgusting pit uh, with rancid, uh, stagnant water at the bottom of it. It is just filled with garbage, both biological and mechanical in nature. It's like nature. My toilet. Outside of that, there's a, a, a little further, a little north of the pit is a, a fenced-in area that's more like a proper junkyard in the sense that it's covered in, uh, you know, car parts, excess construction materials, all kinds of conceivably potentially useful junk, although a lot of it's exposed to the elements and has definitely seen better days. Uh, and further at, at, the, at the end of the fenced-in area, there's a, a, a rickety shack, probably belongs to the, uh, the groundskeeper. This whole case is a waste of time. If this was somebody actually murdered the girl, why wouldn't they just drag the body out here and dump it? They had plenty of time. They had no reason not to. It, it's an animal I, attack. I know what I'm about to say sounds crazy, <laughs> but I think maybe that crazy father had an idea about... You, you said she was pregnant. You think maybe she was going to have a baby? Well, that's usually the next logical course of it. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, the night like she was gonna have a baby. That's why she she, she laid down. She no, laid no, down. No. She didn't know. We, we didn't see a track like she got knocked down or she was hunted down. She, she was staggered and then she laid down. She hasn't been pregnant for that long. Yeah, but uh, father said that uh, she may have had something unholy, unholy going on. Beat I know it sounds crazy, but I can't whip. I can't explain the tracks that I'm seeing. No, no one chased her down and no one ran away and she's dead she was drunk she passed out bear or a wolf or a fox or something i didn't came see in a, a bear or a wolf or a fox track i didn't yeah, see any I didn't, of that. didn't see a lot of tracks and could barely and we experienced trackers could barely see that she even laid down that's true are you guys that's having true. this argument on the way to the dump yeah yeah, okay. yeah it must be yeah yeah <laughs> yeah uh, right after, right after, we yeah. right after we pass that pit, right after we pass that pit, that clinches it for me. Yeah. This is a waste of time. Because anybody could have just thrown. Them if I were, if I were a killer, even a dumb, stupid hit killer out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> I would have at least had the common sense to know that I could throw the body in here, and if somebody even did notice the smell at some point. Well, hello there, there, gentlemen. Ah, crap. <laughs> hey, uh, it, it, looked, it looks like a rather uh, dirty and unwashed uh, uh, fellow is, has come out of that lean-to shack. He uh, has some grime-encrusted overalls and uh, is pretty uh, spectacularly unkempt to the point where you're, you guys are having difficulty guessing this guy's age. He's, he's got stubble, stubble covering uh, his chap cheeks and uh, uh, he's got white hair that is dirty and ragged. This guy definitely looks like he has seen um, uh, better days. He, he comes out and says, uh, 
What can I? What can I do you for? I put on my most winning. I'm so glad to be here, but <laughs> my life sucks because this is so stupid. Now I've got to shake this slimy asshole's hand, face, smile, walk up. Shake his dirty ass, freak of filthy ass hands. While, while he's doing that, I'm just gonna it, try it, and. It is slicked with grease of indeterminate origin. <laughs> <laughs> while, while he's doing that, I'm gonna casually my handkerchief. scan the what just of what I see in the in the dump if there's any kind of tracks. Okay. I'm Federal Agent Sam Spade, and I'm investigating the murder of the girl right up the road here. Oh, from... oh. so they br they brought the feds in it, huh? Unofficially. That's a. Good? I don't know. What, uh, what do you consider that? I guess good that you're here to help. I consider it necessary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a great agent answer. <laughs> so, uh, what can I do for you, gentlemen? Uh, did you uh, happen to hear anything or see anything last night? Mm, nope. Nope, afraid not. Uh, don't really get too many people out here unless they're coming to dump things. Or, you know, collect junk. They need, uh, car parts or, you know, whatever. Paper said some interesting things about transients. You get a lot of transients that- Mostly the four-legged variety. Such as? You know, uh, raccoons, seagulls. Four legs? Four-legged seagulls. Uh, <laughs> the ca occasional bear. I, I, I mouth over to, uh, to my partner there. Bear. <laughs> Watch this. And he, he reaches down and grabs up a, uh, what looks like may have possibly been part of uh, an ice box or something, and just hurls it off into the uh, pit area, and just a flock of seagulls erupt into the air, cawing away. Yes. They ran. They ran so far away. <laughs> That's a lot of birds. What are they doing over there? Well, uh, you know, they tend to keep a lot of garbage here, so they eat it. <laughs> uh, you mind if we look around? Yeah, sure. You boys want to have... Come on. Can I unlock that gate for us? Yeah, sure thing. He opens up the gate. Okay. So we'll just kind of wander around for a bit. Okay. Bear. Right, yeah, bear. So he said bear. Well, the, the pit absolutely reeks, by the way. Yeah. Like, it's... Sin and since since I, uh, uh, since my search, my tracking skill was terrible that last roll, I'm just gonna go for luck, see if any, if I just get lucky seeing anything over here by the pit. Okay. Man, if this was any other game, my rolls would be kick-ass. But since it's, we're rolling for the lowest thing... Well, you, so why are you looking for something? I mean, alright, alright, I can look for it. Uh, you, you notice there's a lot of terrible stenches. Uh, you find a lot of that. 55 out of, like, 85 or something ridiculous. Uh, as you guys walk off, uh, Mr. Coffin, the, uh, groundskeeper, has kind of, like, fallen a few steps behind you guys and has, uh, um, produced from somewhere on his person a flask that he is busily chugging away at. M Mr. Coffin? Yeah, what's up? This would go a lot easier if we weren't being followed. Oh, oh, I get it. Is there a particular it. reason why you're I following us? Are you thirsty? It's 10 o'clock in the morning, Mr. Coffin. What? Oh, I, I guess it is, but listen... Listen, junkyard time ain't the same as normal time, but okay, fine. <laughs> okay, well, using that logic, did you see anything that's see or hear anything this morning or early yesterday evening? Just the cops coming by. So you heard them come by, or you saw them come by? Well, both. They talked to me, so I heard them and I saw them. What you drinking there? Oh, uh, you know, water. <laughs> I I take the glass, I smell it, and I look at the label on the bottle. Do those two things match up? <laughs> no. I don't know if there'd be a label on the bottle at this time. <laughs> no. <laughs> What is it? Uh, it is a hooch of some exceptionally powerful variety. Where do you get this stuff? No, you know, I'm, I'm asking as a personal favor. Uh, oh, uh, you need some? Yeah. Tell you what, ten bucks gets you a barrel full. Ten. How about I give you one dollar, and uh, and I don't let the official part of this step into the conversation. <laughs> Sounds like a deal. You got a deal, sir. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> he grab he grabs up a uh, from his shack a, a small bottle and hands it off to you. It is uh, very clear, but there is definitely some sort of uh, grainy particulate matter at the bottom. You make this here? No, no, no. Just got I know some people. That's what I was asking for with oh. these people that you. Uh, oh you know. no! Well, they, they just you know they stop by occasionally. You know. Okay, I'm gonna take this with us. I think we're tapped out. I don't know what else we can do over here. I agree. Let's go. That cab's going to be here. Right now. Right yeah. Now. yeah. <laughs> so.
Cyril and Dolores make their way to the French Hills uh, address, the uh, address that you had found in Hannah's room. Yeah. We pull right. up to the house. What does it look like? Uh, North Sentinel. This house on North Sentinel Street looks like a giant, rundown shithole. But that really, like, I would say, shit is kind of uh, giving it too much credit. Uh, this place should be condemned. Uh, um, where do we even start? <laughs> uh, uh, well, I guess it's, we knock on the door. Yeah, it looks like it's about. F- <laughs> is it even occupied? Probably about five five stories tall. I mean, it's a big. Does tall it look house. like people actually live here, or is it look condemned? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks run down as hell, but people definitely live here. You hear some uh, noise coming down from it. Sounds like probably on the second floor there's somebody playing jazz music. Oh, right up your alley, Cyril. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, how does, does it sound good? I mean, is it a record? Is it a... Is someone playing music? It is definitely white college kids playing jazz music. It's, um... Well, they're going to be scared out of their mind. It, uh, it could be better, but, you know, it's uh, something in this town. Well, whatever that sound is, it, it, it's a sound that hasn't seen a day of suffering in its life. That's Yeah, that sounds about, about in a degree of bullshit I was expecting, all right? Um, <laughs> knock on the door. Hello? I, I knock on the door very forcefully, very officially. Rap-a-tap-tap. You, you, you knock on the door. You guys wait there for a few moments, and uh, eventually you guys hear some shouting from inside. Just a minute. And the door goes swinging open into a large, uh, uh, and from what you guys can see, the interior is kind of a large central corridor with uh, stairs that go all the way up to the to each floor. The guy in front of you definitely looks like he has seen better days. He is an old man, maybe in his 70s, maybe. He's got bushy eyebrow, eyebrows, stooped, crazy shock of white hair, big crucifix on it uh, dangling from his neck. And he says, uh, what can I do to help you? Hannah Pickering. What? Hannah Pickering, sir. I'm uh, investigating the murder of Hannah Pickering, and this address uh, was perhaps one of her last known locations. I'm looking for information. What's a Hannah Pickering? I don't... I'm guessing she's some kind of prostitute? Uh, no. Uh, what kind of house do you have here, sir? What? I'll whip out a notebook and I'll start writing. What kind of house do you have here, sir? Uh, this is this is my home and uh, apartments. Everybody, I've got tenants. I don't know any Hannah Pickering. And Can we speak to some of the residents? Are they home? Who, who are you guys? We're investigating the Hannah Pickering. How did you not see it? It was in the newspaper. We're working on an official capacity with the police force here to investigate this murder. So as you guys are talking, uh, you guys hear uh, faintly behind you the sound of unlatching and then a creaking as a trunk opens. And then (laughs) (laughs) as running up the uh, uh, sidewalk behind you guys from your car where he was stashed away. Well, hello, good sir. I see you're wearing a I, crucifix. I, I push my way in. Praise Jesus. Yes, I am. But would you perhaps be interested in one of these here Bibles that I sell? That's a, follow here. That's a mighty fine Bible there, <laughs> oh, sir. Oh, yeah. Let me show you. It contains the word of the Lord. Let me just show you right here what the word of the Lord can do. And I pull out my pipe bomb. <laughs> no. <laughs> now Please. listen here. See, this This is the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord incinerates all. So uh, we have some questions for you before this house goes up in flames. This house? Why would you... This is a house of God. Let's say we this sit This is a house of suffering, pure, honest suffering, in the name of Jesus well, Christ. Well, amen, brother, amen, my son. Let's say we go sit down on a couch and talk about this with the word of God in my hand. Yes, indeed. Let us go. All right, let's all, let's all of us go. De- Dolores and I have already walked inside the door. We didn't hear most of that. We just ducked in as soon oh. as he came up as a distraction. He totally forgot the two of you existed as soon as he started engaging with a uh, Bible salesman. Uh, as you guys are making your way in, uh, up, I'm, I guess you guys are going up the steps because he's actually leading him in towards the, d- the door for the first floor. Yes. Um, We're going to go to uh, where that weak sauce jazz music was coming from. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, you guys make your way up to the second floor. As you guys are walking up the stairs, you guys hear a chanted chorus of praise Jesus, hallelujah, coming from below you as the uh, Bible salesman and the landlord uh, engage each other. He is sacred to me, deep in my heart, this suffering of this entire building is his will, and through it we become pure that we may better understand him. You see, for the Lord suffered so that we can suffer, so that when we die miserable deaths, bleeding and puking and shitting our guts out, we can ascend to heaven where we can suckle at the teat of righteousness. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Little baby vanilla Jesus. 
The two of you uh, make your way up to the second floor, rap on the door. The door has been flung open to apartment two. There is a relatively well-heeled looking uh, college student. How can I help you cats? Uh, there's two of them, right? There's just one guy. Just one guy. Have you heard of a Hannah... Pickering. Uh, Hannah Pickering. That name ring any bells for you? No, no, no. Uh, blonde girl, 20s. Walks mm-hmm. with a limp. Her name's not Hannah. That a fact. Yeah. What's uh? What's her name, friend? Miriam. You don't say. Does yeah. uh, this Miriam have a last name? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, H something. Well, uh, what can uh Miriam? Uh, let me tell yeah, you something. Yeah, up Miriam. in the attic. Up in the attic. Yeah. Uh, you, what what do you know about uh Miriam? She's a hot piece. Let me tell you. Really yeah. into limps, huh? A uh, real ripe tomato, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> I've been there a few times. No shit. Get out of town. Well, look, man. You know she was pregnant. <clears throat> what? 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 Oh, well, um, <clears throat> no, I didn't know that. That's a real, uh, it's a, it's a real guess. Uh, I mean, you, you had her, you had her a couple times. Uh, she going steady with anybody? Well, uh, I had her, not really so much. But anyways, uh, I don't know, man. She, she sees a lot of guys. Is that a business for her? She just sees a lot of guys. Yeah, she's real friendly. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, what's what's your name, pal? Uptake, uh, Spencer Uptake. Spencer. <laughs> this is sound like total bullshit. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. Who, who are you guys? Who do you work for? Uh, well, we, uh, we're operating in an official capacity here. Really? Spencer. Oh. So, uh, what, uh, what, why? What's, what's the matter? You know what? We're gonna check out that room. You, uh, you chill out here. We might come back, got some questions, but, uh, but hey, don't worry, pal. You're... You're just you're just fine. You're what? just fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. You He's keep, hoping you... you don't have blood on your hands. Wink. Walk out the door. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Hey, hey, she she's real funny. Tell you what, you keep practicing that jazz music, okay? Yeah, yeah, I know how to play the instruments. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, hey, tell you what, you know, you keep playing. Maybe uh, maybe I'll show you a thing or two. Just uh, you know, just uh, mellow out, friend. Mellow out. Yeah, sure. Do what you gotta do. Blood. Okay. Bye. <laughs> it's like, her name's Miriam. So what's the last name? Miriam Webster. And you see the dictionaries on the <laughs> shelf. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> Things are seldom what they seem, and mysteries abound. Be sure not to miss an episode of our series by subscribing to us on your favorite podcast player. And if you'd be so kind, we'd love it if you'd leave us a rating or a review on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. You know, this is an improvised show, which means there's always twists and turns that our investigators don't take. For instance... So now we're at the French Hills neighborhood. Tell me about French Hills. Did like the French kiss up in French Hills? Hannah's alter ego was doing some French kissing up in there. <laughs> yeah. So there's actually so much going on in this place, like this house on North Sentinel Street. Almost four pages of it. Whoa. There are entire families that you guys didn't talk to that live in that house. Colin, this is your segment, bud. <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you. This is this is exactly what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> If you're curious about these roads not taken, then you simply must hear Cthulhu Cthomentary, our episodic explorations of this fine series published at patreon.com slash omniverse media. Let it be known. Invest in the creation of our dark arts and ye shall be rewarded. You'll be kept up to date on our latest productions and up to your eyeballs in bonus content for our sinister series. Speaking of eyes, I went to the optometrist today. Looks like I'm going to need to invest in a pair of glasses, which uh, will take some getting used to. Eyes are funny things, aren't they? They can tell you a lot about a person. Like a tell, during a game of cards, someone's eye might twitch if they're bluffing. Then there's the old superstition that if your eyes start twitching involuntarily, it might be some kind of omen. If it's the right eye, you're going to hear some good news. <laughs> but if it's the left, well, you better keep an eye out. I know, I know. You're thinking, ay, 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 enough about eyes already. <laughs> well, I hope you'll allow me one final musing on the world of optics. This is a song performed by Architects of Fear, a rather interesting group that incorporates an unusual instrument called the auto harp. 
And this is a song called Eyes. You see sin and the devil. But the Lord has told us what to do about it. Said Matthew in chapter 5. If thine eye offends thee, plug it out! to the Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. And be sure to subscribe to our series via your favorite podcast player to get all the latest episodes. Episode 4, Hot Leads and Dirty Deeds, was written and performed by Luke Stram, Kat Blackard, Doug Banks, Kay, Brandon Gerson, and Rule Knudsen. And is based on the Call of Cthulhu scenario, Behold the Mother, from Dead Reckonings, published by Chaosium Incorporated. Additional performance by Jessica Ullman. The series is edited and produced by Colin Peterson and Kat Blackard, and the original score is composed and performed by Ryan McQuinn and Mike McQuinn of Neon Dolphin. Home for all your custom music needs and more, neondolphinmusic.com. For full episode credits, transcripts, as well as character sheets and other supplemental material, visit CthulhuMystery.com. This program is made possible by the support of listeners like you. 
join us at patreon.com slash omniverse media. All characters appearing are fictitious, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This series is recorded and produced in Central Florida and Nashville, Tennessee, on lands ruthlessly taken from their indigenous people, the Tamuqua and Seminole, and Yuchi, Shawnee, and Cherokee, respectively. To learn more about the First Nations of the lands where you live, visit native-land.ca. This has been the Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program. Good night. Omniverse.